Hi, welcome to this WordPress Gutenberg tutorial. This tutorial is going to teach you everything you need to know about using the WordPress Gutenberg block editor. There's two real ways to watch this. You can either sit back, grab a coffee and watch the whole thing, but I've also put chapter markers in it. So you can either go to the description and see the chapters that I've included, or just hover over at the bottom of the YouTube video and you can go to each section. So thanks very much and I'll see you for a quick chat at the end. I want to start with a quick look at the old editor versus the new editor. So this is the old editor, which is now known as the classic editor. And really it's just a simple word processor. So you can type in it and like I'm doing here, and it's fine for that and a few images perhaps, but you can't really do any kind of nice layouts with it. Let's contrast that with the new block editor, which is here. And the whole concept behind the block editor is that everything on your page becomes a block. And I'm gonna turn on um, the block outline view here. This is just using a plugin that lets us show the structure. And can you see how everything on my page actually is a block? And your pages and your posts now are made up of blocks. And you'll see at the top here I have a paragraph block. Then down here, this is a cover block. And within that, I actually have a paragraph. And then down here, I have a gallery block. And there is a whole library of blocks that you can add into your pages. The upshot of this is that you can create much, much, much nicer looking pages using the block editor than the old classic editor. Gutenberg actually comes in two flavors. It comes included in WordPress, but it also comes as a separate plugin. Now the plugin is always a few steps ahead of what you get included in WordPress. So if you want the latest and greatest stuff, you can install the plugin. However, I personally wouldn't recommend it for production sites because sometimes there are bugs in the plugin that haven't been fully ironed out yet before they get included in the core software. There are two screen settings that I personally change before I start working in the block editor. The first one is to turn off full screen mode. And to do that, you just click on these three dots here and click on full screen mode. That will bring back your menus on the left. Personally, I find that a much easier way to work because you don't lose the context of where you're working within your website. The second thing I always do is to fix this toolbar here uh, to the top of the page. So when you're working within the block editor, you get this toolbar. Sometimes it gets in the way. So personally, I like to fix that to the top. You just click on these three dots up here and click top toolbar. And can you see how it's now nicely fixed to the top of my page? Your post and page settings are now found next to the block tab up here. So you just click on post and there's all your post settings as before. Let's look at the library of blocks that you can now use within your pages. They are all accessed by clicking on the blue plus sign. They'll be listed on the left here and now they're arranged in logical sections. The first section are your text based blocks. We have paragraph, heading, lists, quote, code, and some other ones, including tables. Then if I scroll down this left-hand panel, we'll see our media blocks. You see the little heading here. So we have image, galleries, audio, cover, file, media, and text, and video. Scrolling down further, we have our design blocks, buttons, columns, group, uh, spaces, and some other exciting things as well. And then further on down, we have widgets. And then further on down than that, we have embeds. You will probably find that you spend 80% of your life working in the text, media, and design blocks. You can close down this left-hand panel by clicking on the cross sign up here, or open it up by clicking on it again. To insert a block within, to your, within your page, you can now drag and drop them from your block library into the page. So I'm dragging a heading across here. You'll see a blue line that tells me where that block is gonna go. I just drop it into that area, and now I can write my heading. There is a quicker way to add blocks within your pages. Here's how you do it. You just type forward slash, then you type the name of the block that you want to add. So I've hit forward slash heading, then you hit return, and now I can write my heading. Every block that you add into your page can be customized. And to customize a block, you can do it in the block settings panel over on the right hand side of the page here. And as I click between the blocks, can you see how the options on the right are changing? Because each block has its own set of options to customize it. 
So if I click in the heading block, I can do things like change the font size and I can change the color of that font. If I click in the cover block here, I can do things like change the focal point of the block and make it a fixed parallax background. So each block can be customized, but you'll only see the customized options when you click into each block. The toolbar will give you extra options for each block that you add into your page. And it's found here if it's floating, or it might be along the top of the page if you set it up here. Now the options in there will relate to the block that you're working on. Now I've clicked on the paragraph block. It tells me this over here. So the options in my toolbar relate to that paragraph block. So I can do things like change the alignment, or I can make words bold or italic, or I can highlight a word and create, the, create a hyperlink, or I can do things like change the color, text color of individual words. But if I click on the cover block underneath it, can you see how the options in the toolbar have now changed because the, the cover block has different options than the paragraph block. For example, I can make this full width or wide width or align it. I can also change the position of my text and I can also replace the background image. So the toolbar is very, very useful, but just bear in mind the options in there will change depending on the block that you're working on. There are three ways to navigate to your blocks. You can either click into the block with your cursor. The second way is to use the list view here, these three lines. That will show you a list of all the blocks in your page. You can drag and drop these up and down, like so. The third way is to use the breadcrumb trail. So here's a columns block. And if I click into this section here and then look down here at the bottom of the page, it shows me the breadcrumbs within that block. So if I wanted to select the top level here, I could simply click on columns and that would select the top level columns block. There are two main types of blocks, simple blocks and container blocks. Simple blocks are simple. You add them to your page and you customize them. So this is the paragraph block. I've added it to the page and I can customize it. Container blocks are far more exciting in many, in many ways because they allow you to nest other blocks within them. The result of that is you can do much richer layouts. I put a few examples on the screen here for you so you can see. So this is a columns block and the columns block allows you to nest other blocks within it. And you can see the hierarchy of your blocks by clicking on the list view here. And here's my columns block. And let me just turn up the um, opacity so we can actually see the block outline. So there's the columns block. And within the columns block, I have two columns. There's column one, there's column two, there's the paragraph one, and there's paragraph two. But I could also put other blocks within my columns. I can nest blocks within them. So let's put an image in this right hand column. I'll just choose a photograph. There's a photograph and can you now see I've got a column and I've got a paragraph and I've got an image. If I want to drag that image to the top, I can just drag it to the top. So I can achieve much richer layouts with container blocks than I can with just simple blocks. Another type of container block is your cover block, which we've already looked at. Here's the cover block. There's the hierarchy there. So there's the top level cover, but within that I've got two paragraphs. And I've also got the buttons block with one button within it because the buttons block is also an example of a container block because you can have more than one button nested within it. Okay. And the final type of um, container block I want to show you is the media and text block, which again, you can have blocks within blocks. So the top level container is the media and text block. But within that, in this right hand column, I have a spacer block, which is this one here. Under there, I have a paragraph block. And under there, I have another spacer block. So con container blocks are really cool because they allow you to nest more than one block within them. Working with simple blocks is simple. I'm going to add an image block into this page. And I've turned on the block outline view using the block outline plugin just so we can see what's going on. You click on the blue block sign. You can either scroll down here to find the image block, which is in the media panel, or you can also search for blocks. So if I search for image, that will find the image block. Now I can just drag and drop it into my page anywhere I like. Let's pop it there. 
Once you drag it there, it's going to prompt you to either upload your own image or choose one from your media library. Let me choose this image here. Now, once it's in place, you'll see over on the right here that you've got your options to customize that image block. So I can do things like make it rounded. Um, I can also change the alt text. I can also change the image size here, or I can actually change the image size by dragging this up and down here. In your toolbar, you'll see some extra options to do with that image block. So I can do things like make it full width. I can also link it using this little link icon here. I can crop it and I can also replace it. So I could choose another photo to replace it. Working with container blocks is similar to simple blocks, but a little bit more complex. So I'm going to add a columns block into this section here. And I'm just going to put forward slash and then type columns and then choose the columns block. Now I get to choose whether, which proportion I want to use. And I've left the block outline view plugin active so we can see exactly what we're building here. And I'm just going to do a two column layout. Let's choose this one here. And that will essentially set my grid. Now let's look at the hierarchy now. Click on these three lines and here we go. We've, we've got the top level columns block. And then within that, I have my two columns. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some text in this left hand column, like so. And can you see now the hierarchy has changed? So I have the columns block, which is the top level. I still have my two columns, but I now have a paragraph within this first column. I can see it's within it because it's, it's indented slightly underneath it. In this right hand column, let me put the image block in here. Choose media library and insert it. Okay, so now if we look back on the left, we have the top level columns block, and then we have two columns. Within the first one, the left hand column, I have my paragraph block. Within the second column, I have my image block. I could though put further blocks within each column. So now within the first column, I have two paragraphs, but I could put any block I like in here. Just to repeat myself, when it's showing these little um, descriptions over the top, that's because I'm using the block outline plugin you wouldn't normally see that. It just helps demoing to show the structure. Now the key bit about working with container blocks is you need to be sure of which element, which block you've actually selected to see the right options on the right. So for example, if I wanted to add a background color to the, the entire columns block, I would have to make sure I select the top level columns block. Now there are two ways to do this. You can either click on these three lines to show the list view and then click on columns here, or you can use the breadcrumbs at the bottom here to navigate to the top. So a really great tip here is to click into the, click anywhere within the section and then navigate up the breadcrumbs to click on the columns, columns block. And then over on the right, I can now change the background color of the entire col columns block. So one of the big tricks to working with container blocks is to make sure you understand the hierarchy. There are two ways to delete a block. You can select the block and then click on these three dots and then hit remove block. Or you can select the block and hit the backspace key. To delete more than one block, hold down the shift key and click the blocks you want to delete. You'll see they're highlighted. Once you've highlighted them, click on the three dots and hit remove blocks. There are three ways to move blocks. The first way is to select the block and then you'll see these two arrows up and down here and I can simply move it up or move it down. The second way is now in the list view, you can drag and drop. At the moment, this is just available if you're using the Gutenberg plugin. And the third way is to click on these three dots and hit move to. You'll see a blue line. You hit the up arrow to where you want that block to go. And then you just hit return. You can copy all the content from your page and use that content in another page. To do this, click on these three dots in the top right of the screen. Come down here, click copy all content, go to your new page and paste that content in.
To add social icons into your pages, use the social icons block that comes with Gutenberg. Just drag it into your page. Once it's added, you need to click on the little plus sign here. And now you add your social icons. You can either choose the ones you see here, but you can also search for them here. So if I want to add a Pinterest one, I can add that in. The icon will appear, but now you have to click on it one more time. And this is where you put the address of your Pinterest page in. Likewise, the same with Facebook and Twitter and all the other social icons. You add the icon, then click on it, then add the address in. Two ways that you can add videos into your site. You can either upload them directly or embed them from YouTube and Vimeo. This is how you embed them directly. Just search for the video block, drag it into your page. Now choose your video from your media library or upload a new one. Click select in the bottom right and your video will appear. Over on the right you have some video settings to autoplay, loop, to mute it or to include playback controls but your video will now be working on your site. The second way that you can add video into your site is to embed it from YouTube or Vimeo and there are special blocks for both of these so search for YouTube, drag it into your page. It's going to ask you here to enter a URL to embed here which you get from your video. So you go to the video that you want to embed. Here's one of mine. Under your video or any video on the right here you'll see this share link. Click on share this will give you this link, click copy, go back to your page and just pop that link in there and click embed. If you ever need to paste HTML into your site from another site like MailChimp in this case, there is now an HTML block. So I have some HTML here from MailChimp. Just go to your page, search for the HTML HTML block, drag it into your page, and just simply paste your code in. Once the code's in there, you can also preview here by clicking preview. A really common question I get asked a lot is how do you align buttons? This is how you do it, and the trick here is to make sure you select the right level again. So click on these three lines. And can you see how the buttons block is actually a container block? So we need to click, click the top level here. And now with this little icon here, we can justify them center. But the trick is to make sure you click the top level. Duplicating blocks can be a real time saver, especially when you're working in blocks like the columns block. So I want to create a three column layout instead of having to do it every single time. I create the first block in the way I want it, and then simply what I'm going to do is duplicate it, but I need to make sure I'm duplicating at the right level. I want to duplicate this entire column, which contains a cover block, so I must select the column down here, and now with my little three dots, I can duplicate that twice, because I want three columns, and now simply I jump into these columns and make sure I've selected the whole column, and delete them. It's also possible to transform blocks into a different type of block. Here we have the paragraph block, and by clicking on this little icon here, I'm able to transform this block into a different type of block. In this case, I'll change it into a pull quote. This is a cool little trick that you can transform text into columns. What you do is you select the columns by holding the shift key or the up arrow, selecting your columns that you want to uh, transform, click on the little transform icon and click columns and your text will be magically transformed into those three columns. It's also possible to group blocks together. How to do this, you select the blocks by holding the shift key and then clicking on the blocks. Click on the little icon here and select this option here. Now one of the big advantages of doing creating group blocks is that you can apply the same settings whether that's a background color or a CSS class to the entire group.
Reusable blocks let you save a block design to a library and then reuse it on different pages within your website. To create a reusable block is very simple. Just select your block. In this case, I'm selecting the entire cover block. Click on the three dots and click Add to Reusable Blocks. Give it a name and then that block will now be available in your block library to reuse on different parts of your website. Let me show you. So if I create a new page now and I click on the plus sign up here to add my block, you'll see a new section here that says reusable and in there is my reusable block. It's also possible to manage your reusable blocks by clicking on the three dots over here, coming down to tools and clicking on manage reusable blocks. In there, you'll see a list of all the reusable blocks and they are also available here to edit, to trash or to export. Patterns are predefined layouts of Gutenberg blocks. You can access them by clicking on the plus sign here and you'll see in the tab here patterns. Now these are often related to the theme that you're using. So they might be theme specific or they might come with plugins. But to add them, you just click on them and that's going to bring that collection of blocks in in a predefined layout. You can also find block patterns at wordpress.org forward slash patterns. There is now a growing directory of patterns here that you, you can use on your websites. To use these, you just hover over the one you like the look of, click copy, go back to your page that you're building and you literally paste that in and it will automatically bring in that block pattern for you. It's now really easy to add jump links into your Gutenberg pages. A jump link is where you have a link at the top of the page, which when a user clicks on it, it'll take them down to a portion of the page that's much further down the page. This is an example of a very long page, but you'll see when I click on the jump link, it takes them right down to that section down here automatically. They're really easy to set up now in Gutenberg. This is how you do it. So I've got a winter one that I'm going to link up here, which is going to take my readers all the way down to this winter section right down here. There's just two steps to get this to work. Let me go to edit page and show you this. Step one, you need to go down to your place where you want that jump link to go to. Click on the block that you want to link to, click on advanced over here, and you need to put an HTML anchor in here. So this can be anything you like, but we're going to refer to this in a minute. The second point is you go back up the top here and this is where you link that word to that anchor. So you click on the word, click on the little link icon here, and then you hit hash and then you need to make use the same word that you used as the anchor. Let's update that. Click view page, click on the link and there we go. It scrolls all the way down. It's also possible to add additional styles using CSS with the Gutenberg block editor. Here's an extreme example where I put a box shadow around a paragraph block. To add your CSS, there's just two steps. You click on the block, go to advanced, and down here, this is where you put your additional CSS class. That adds the class to that block. Then to actually add the CSS to start it, you go customize. And then in here, you go additional CSS and this is where you put your CSS. There are two views with the Gutenberg block editor, the visual view, which is the default view, or a code view. To see the code, click on the three dots in the top right, come down here and select code editor. There are lots of keyboard shortcuts that will help speed up your workflow. To access them, click on the three dots, come down here and click on keyboard shortcuts. And there are a full list here of all the keyboard shortcuts that you can use when you're editing content. Once you're happy with your page, you can either save as a draft, preview or publish. If you preview, you get a choice to preview in desktop, tablet or mobile or in a new tab. If you publish, it will then ask you whether you really want to publish. 
You can turn off that pre-published check by clicking on the three dots and then clicking on preferences and then turning off the pre-published checklist. It's also possible to hide certain blocks within your block library, blocks that maybe you don't use. To do that, click on the three dots in the top right, click on preferences, then click on blocks, and here you can turn off any blocks that you don't want to show in the block library. There are now hundreds of plugins that are block enabled. What that means is they'll add blocks, extra blocks for you to use in your block library. Here's just two examples. This is the shape divider block, which is a block that comes with the Caxton plugin, which is one of our plugins. Here's another example, which is a maps block, which lets you add a Google map into your page. The plugin just adds this extra block. You drag it into your page and it automatically brings a Google map into that space. It's also now possible to build your WooCommerce store using Gutenberg blocks. So WooCommerce now comes with WooCommerce blocks, which is a whole series of blocks to let you build out your store pages. There is also a plugin which we built called WooBuilder blocks that lets you customize the individual product page using Gutenberg. Here's an example on the screen. There are some really great themes now being built just for the block editor. Here's three. Bloxy is a really great one. Uh, Cadence as well, fantastic theme. And one more, this is a company and a real design they're called, but they're building some beautiful themes specifically now for the WordPress block editor. At the moment, we're using the Gutenberg block editor to build our pages and our posts and now our widgets. In the near future though, we're going to be building our entire websites with it, which means the header, including all the navigation and also the footer. So everything we build on our sites will be built using blocks. If you want to take Gutenberg for a test drive, go to wordpress.org forward slash Gutenberg. And there you will find the latest version of Gutenberg that you can have a play with. So there we go. I hope you found that useful and you made it to the end. So thanks so much. If you can give it a thumbs up, that'd be fantastic because it really helps spread the word about my videos on Gutenberg and I'm producing more and more. If you do want to see more, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you very soon.